I'm Leo for Kit Guru with Remote Luke. So I can hear Luke, but I can't see him. You get the privilege of seeing us both. Video cards. Actually, say hello, Luke. Hello, Luke. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had to. You set me up there. You set me up. <laughs> okay, it's going to be one of those. Um, we've done the launch of Core i9 12900K and Core i5 12600K. I'm working on the Core i7 12700K. It is obvious to everybody that Intel has launched 3K SKUs and also 3KFs without graphics. And that's it. And it's also clear that is not the entire 12th gen Alder Lake product stack. Happily, we've already been hearing rumours about Core i5 12400 and video cards in their inimitable fashion has released an entire table of SKUs, stock keeping units from Intel, going all the way from Core i9-1200K right down to a Pentium G7400. What do you think, Luke? Do you think this looks like an interesting product stack or a bit of a mixed bag? Hmm. There's a good question. Well, you just pointed out uh, just before we were, just before we were recording actually that some of the lower end parts are not actually the kind of quote unquote big little uh, architecture, are they? So it's almost like do they does that lose some of the pizzazz that comes with the new twelfth gen? Well, perhaps not because we've already seen that the the process is better, the architecture is fundamentally better. So perhaps actually, perhaps we'll see that this uh, 12400F, which the 400F has always been a good one for the past two generations or so, perhaps we'll see that being another king. Well, the, the, here's the thing: when Intel came uh, came along with Core, and we had it, we initially went up to Core i7, then they went to Core i9. They kind of had rules, didn't they, about what is a Core i3, what's a Core i5, what's a Core. So it was Core i3 didn't have hyperthreading from memory, yeah, and Core i5 had hyperthreading but didn't boost and Core i7 was the all singing or dancing then Core i9 came out and that one's got the extra special boost and so on and so forth so there's a kind of a a, a rule that covers the family and last gen that went down the swanee when both Core i9 and Core i7 had eight cores so that didn't help and now you're looking here at Core i5 from 12600k down to 12600 12500 12400 12300 Sorry, that's a Core i3, down to 12400. And the 12600K is six uh, performance cores plus uh, four efficient cores. And then the Core i5 12600 non K appears to be six performance cores and no little efficient cores. Yeah. So Core i5 12600, that letter, the suffix, would appear to make a huge difference. Yeah, which is confusing because it was always meant to be that K basically just meant unlocked multiplier and of course a slight change in the right. nominal uh, frequencies out of the box. But what? <laughs> it's like that's that's a massive right. difference. Almost to the point where, frankly, this kind of like you were alluding to a minute ago, shouldn't be called Core i5 or 12600 because right. that is incredibly confusing. Right. And the thing is that this Core i9, Core i7, Core i5, it bugs me. It has bugged me from day one because uh, it's got its core i odd number when every single process has an even number of cores. They've got gaps between the i3 and the i5, the i7, the i9. Yeah, core i4, Core i6, Core i8. They, they have the capability if they want to stick to this. I, I hate the core system, but they have the, uh, the option of plugging in a Core i4. Yeah. No problem at all. Yeah. It's, it, there's a gap sat there. And if this chart is correct, there's obviously going to be differences in speeds. Naturally, that's always the way of it. But apparently the Core i5-12-500 has UHD 730 graphics and the unit above it has UHD 770 graphics and so on and so forth. And it's like this differentiation, which is... And yet, you know, the ad advertising for a PC is going to be with new Intel 12th Gen Core i5. Yeah, and it's like, what does that mean? Uh, full stop. Yeah, right. And it's a big, big difference. Uh, and then you go down to the Core i3-12300 and the Core i3-12100, assuming this leak is correct. Four performance cores, no efficient cores. Well, I'm kind of okay with that. A quad-core Core i3, that's okay. But those Core i5s, that's a right old mash-up. I, to use the politest word I can use. I agree, yeah. And it's a shame, really, because I think we've already waxed lyrical about how well Intel has done with this launch. They have done a very good job. Mm. But their naming system is still 
just as bad as it was before. Because their naming system for now, at least a couple of generations, has been a complete disaster. And in all seriousness, mm. it's been... I don't know how harsh I want to get with this, but it has been um, not very friendly towards the consumer. I think we can put it that way. It's a nice way of putting mm. it. It just it simply hasn't been. It's been confusing. So this was a good opportunity to fix things. I guess not. No, quite. I will also say, as, as you said, the Core i5... Uh was it the 10 400 11 400 uh which was the dot probably both actually the the sort of the the, the good value proposition yeah the 10 In 400 this instance, six, wasn't it yeah, yeah exactly without the graphics was cheap and and good and in this instance the 12 400 1200 f appears to be six cores 12 threads uh four gigahertz and then boosting to 4.4 um you know with a single core presumably but call it a four gigahertz processor, six cores. Well, that's a Ryzen 5 right there. So you're then into the nuance. And given that AMD doesn't yet have, well, I mean, the APUs are a different animal, uh, but the regular Ryzen 5 doesn't have graphics. If you want a graphics core, that Core i5-12400, that should be an interesting little fight. Yeah, it should be, yeah. If you just want a basic graphics output, that looks like the natural successor to something like the 10400F, which was a very... Um, popular CPU and good value and it looks like the natural successor because it, like you say it's just straight cores straight threads but on the new architecture and the new process so that is a particularly exciting one in my opinion given what we've seen already from the Core i5-12600K which as we've just said is hard to directly compare even though they're both Core i5s. Uh, absolutely and of course release so we've we've had the november release of the uh of the k SKUs, and the date given for all these other SKUs is january 2022 which i think we can agree is going to be ces so january yeah. first week of january now we aren't uh, i i can't see us going to ces uh, we've only just opened travel from the uk uh, back to america and it's just a great big bag of unknown so sadly uh, i don't think we're going to be there uh, physically we'll be there virtually so CES is going to be desktop lower SKUs of Alder Lake and you have to assume from this other chipsets because the idea of plugging a Core i5-12400 into a Z690 motherboard would be daft. Yeah that doesn't make sense you, you need the lower end and cheaper chipsets at that mm. point don't you? So therefore we can expect a raft of budget motherboards uh whether we'll get the famed DDR5 and DDR4 motherboard, I, I, someone always does one of them, but uh, maybe, maybe not. But these look to me like uh, they're waiting for cheap chipsets, DDR4, because after all, no one's been spending a fortune on the memory of these kind of SKUs, and budget performance PC, or particularly if you don't use a graphics card. Yeah, and I think the uh, the budget chipsets over the last couple of generations, at least, they've got a bit more enticing, haven't they? Not least because Intel has improved the onboard memory support for the CPU. So whereas previously a budget mm. chipset would lock you down to low performance, low speed RAM, it's not really the case now. And a lot of the, so for example, if we look at the 12400F, it doesn't have an unlocked multiplier anyway. So what are you really losing no. with the budget chipset? It's, well, not, not a lot. To be <laughs> Nonsense of which you speak. Z690, after all, supports up to four M.2 SSDs and some of the real premium boards have five. We know the Core i5-12400 market wants four M.2 SSDs, don't we? Oh, absolutely. That probably costs more than the processor, funny enough. <laughs> yeah exactly exactly you have to have so a really it's niche be... use case to spend more on storage <laughs> ssd storage than on your processor on the consumer market that is unique i would have said yeah. no quite i did actually have a uh a, a, it wasn't exactly a run-in but um uh, i i when i was doing the preview uh for this launch i did the news a week before various motherboards and such like and i said oh and this board's a bit cheaper and it's got four sata rather than six but who cares? Four SATA is more than anyone needs. And naturally, I had someone in the comments saying, I've got five SATA SSDs. Or It's like, really? S tell me more. And it was, uh, I've got two 250 gig ones from the past and one that had one new one. And so on. And it's like, well, okay, those sound very old. Wouldn't you do better to copy all that data onto one SATA SSD? I mean, no, we weren't even talking M.2s. This was SATA. And I've got visions of some 10-year-old SSDs. Because as we know, when they fail, 
they fail. Yeah, totally. Yeah, don't remind me about that. I had an instant on my server the other day where it failed and I lost a boatload of data off my server, including two virtual machines, a bunch of Docker images. That was not nice. That was that was not nice. I didn't I didn't know this. I, I didn't mean to um, trade on your pain. Yeah, but, um, I was mentioning to timely. James, so, and I think um, he gave me the moral pep talk of ha ha ha. So <laughs> so I kept my mouth shut from that point onwards. He's he's from Yorkshire, isn't he? Yes. Um, wow, harsh. So no, um, when I see motherboards that only have four SATA rather than six, I I can't get too exercised about it. And the idea of you know the Core i5 12400, Core i5 12500. Uh, you're going to have few SATA, few M.2s, minimal memory speed because you know you know these processors aren't going to go super duper fast. Uh, and what you'd be looking for is cheap. That's that's going to be it, isn't it? It's going to be give me the performance, give me the cool running, give me cheap. Yeah, it is. Yeah, and like you say, with memory speed, maybe a thirty-two hundred megahertz kit with some reasonable timings, just whatever budget kit you can get your hands on, really, isn't it? And that's probably going to run fine in these boards and i say that as someone who hasn't looked but what is the official ddr4 support for the new chips is i think it is is it 3200 official i think it is isn't it yeah but it, it's just the, those official supports are garbage i mean they're they're quite co intel was quite cock a hoop with the 11th gen that they'd um increased the official speed from oh something terrible to something less terrible it was like fine uh, because who on earth runs it out of the box on official JEDEC rather than clicking XMP? I mean, it just makes... No, in our world, I mean, yeah. perhaps there are people out there, but in our world, it makes no sense. Uh, I must confess, I'm, I'm just skimming to the very bottom of this uh, leaked product stack, but I'm taking it as gospel. Pentium G7400, two performance cores plus zero efficient cores equals four threads, and then the rest of it is just like, we don't know. And I'm just looking at it going, yeah... I've got visions of someone somewhere selling a, a little work PC, which would be presumably quite cheap, you know, to, to companies, corporates, with a Intel 12th Gen Windows 11, and it'd be like, and that there is the entire list of features. Yeah, yeah, that that strikes me, like you said, it's kind of almost like um, just your general receptionist office PC or a thin client where you use it just to connect to like a more powerful server or something. I, I struggle to see. And again, this is because we kind of got the blinders on for our world a little bit, but I still, I really do str yeah, struggle absolutely. to see the use of a dual core Pentium because I would imagine that market is covered very well by, I don't know, cheap laptops or, you know, ARM. Phone. Yeah, <laughs> yes, yeah quite. quite frankly. I mean, well, yes, it, yeah, quite two core, four thread. Mm -mm, no thanks. But the Core i5s down the bottom of that stack will be very interested to see the pricing because, of course, the thing is, how many Ryzen 3s are there on the market? Let me count on my fingers. Not many, put it that way, yeah. Yeah, there's the older ones, of course, which I, I saw an article a few weeks ago, which you can finally actually buy. Ryzen 3 3000 series. You can finally buy them over a year later. Great. I didn't... But, do you know, I, di I didn't know that. There's. I, I was just basically, you know, obviously working there towards the answer of there's no such thing. You were being the facetious, weren't you, Leo? I know, I know. <laughs> 100% yeah, to totally um, so once again uh, as with your server dying um, so with this I, I wasn't aware that Ryzen 3 previous gen are they cheap? Uh, yes I think they are slash were cheap so when when I, I remember reviewing them back in sometime in 2020 mm. it might have been it might have been early I, I think it was like May 2020 or something let me know in the comment section down below um, I can't remember exactly, mm. but the 3300X, the Ryzen 3 3300X in particular, was a good price, and it was single CCX back before Zen 3, mm. so that was actually a good chip, mm. but due to, you know, the ongoing issues at that time, plus the fact that Zen 2 uh, chip letter in massive demand, it just never really existed, and then a few weeks ago, I saw an article saying, hey, you can finally buy one, and I was like, oh, right, okay, that's interesting. Well, there we go. Yeah, mm. yeah, so... Yeah, so to, uh, but to answer your point, yes, Zen 3, Ryzen 3, then, pff, yeah, yeah, you ain't buying one without, without there we go. a graphics card, without a graphics chip, you know, so. So it's something for us to look forward to at Virtual CES 2022, not only a bunch of different Intel Core i5s on 12th gen, but also, naturally, essentially, actually, it's essential that we have the cheap motherboards, the, lo the sensible motherboards that go with, we want the in the 100 to 200 dollar range of motherboards because without that these processes make no sense whatsoever and if we can get motherboards that support ddr4 and the new processors 
I'm, I, I want to have a play with one. I really do. Absolutely. I love the high end stuff. Yeah, mm. and I th- the, the new Core i9 blows my socks off, but the the Core i5 and down, it's got potential. Yeah, and and even when you say with the new motherboards, there's even a, a niche technicality if they play their cards right, like the motherboard vendors did with B550 on AMD. If they play their cards mm. right, there's a niche technicality whereby these new cheaper boards could actually be good choices for the Core i9 simply because of the uh, specific DDR5 support speed from the processor um, and the actual DDR5 kits that you can buy. Because you can't really buy the heavily overclocked chips that would dictate a higher end motherboard. So if you're buying, like you said before, kind of JEDX spec DDR5 kits, I think I've interchanged DDR4, DDR5. I'm talking about DDR5. If you buy JEDX speed DDR5 kits, you could put them in one of these lower end boards and you wouldn't actually be losing that much. Now I'm not saying many people are gonna do that, but that actually could be a real rival to the high-end chips on AMD with a B550 board. Who knows? Intel, Intel fighting back against the mighty AMD. It still seems wrong to think of it that way. Right, so we're looking forward to this. This is good news, and this is, hopefully, we're expecting all going to be at CES, which is now, my lord. Only a few weeks, weeks away. away. Yeah, a few weeks away. Wow, how time flies. Wowzer, there we go. Right, that's it for this one. This is Leo signing off and Luke, wave, wave Luke. I can't see if you're waving. I'm waving, promise. I'll take I'm it. not doing anything. I'll obscene. take it that you're waving. That's... <laughs>